Hello, everyone. Welcome to St. John the Evangelist here in Beta Vin, New Brunswick, Canada. This little church has been here since 1921 and has served this community faithfully uh, since that time. The congregation, however, has been here since, uh, for about, was here about 100 years before that. Today, we commemorate an event, what might be called a seminal event in the life of this parish. It is the Escumenac Disaster Memorial Service. Now, on June 19th, the night of June 19th and uh, June 20th, 1959, 61 fishermen left this community to go and make a living on the sea. 35 of those souls did not come back. Today we will recite their names, not only to remember them, but to thank God for them, for their sacrifices, and for their families. And we pray that their legacies and their memories will not be in vain. Sixty-one people left this community. They kissed their, their lives, their families, their loved ones, and went out to sea. They did not have the kinds of uh, electronics and reporting systems that we have today. The winds came up at about 75 miles per hour or 120 kilometers per hour with 49-foot waves. Seas recorded in the uh, Northumberland Strait just off, offshore from here were, uh, were hurricane force, force 12 hurricane force waves. 22 of the 32 boats which put out to sea that night did not return. 61 souls left. Only 16 returned. The youngest victim was 13 years of age. 35 people from this community who were loved and cared for were no longer part of their families. So before we read the names, I'll read Psalm 107 as the introit psalm. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens, they go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble and he brings them out of their, dark, their darkness and distress. He calms the storm so that its waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So he guides them to their desired haven. Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. And now I'll ask uh, Cindy Kingston, who, uh, whose a number of her relatives died on that evening, I'll ask her to read the names. <clears throat> in honor of the fishermen who lost their lives in the Eskimonac disaster, June 20th, 1959. 
John Chapman, Adrian Chesson, Albert Chesson, Alphonse Chesson, Robert Chesson, William Chesson, Frazier Cook, Edgar Daigle, Charles Govan, Arthur Kelly, Hector Kelly, Hugh Kelly, Clifford Kingston, Windsor Kingston, Alfred McClanigan, George McLeod, Amon Manuel, William George Manuel, Alonzo Martin, Andre Martin, Remy Martin, Alan Mills, Andrew Mills, Jeffrey Richard, Jean-Louis Richard, Lionel Richard, Raphael Robichaud, Victor Robichaud, Leo Roy, Harold Taylor, Cunard Williston, Eric Williston, Haley Williston, Haynes Williston, Oswald Williston. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. Amen. Amen. The first reading today is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 20, beginning at verse 7. O Lord, you in induced me, and I was persuaded. You are stronger than I, and have prevailed. I am in derision daily. Everyone mocks me. For when I spoke, I cried out. I shouted, violence and plunder. Because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a derision daily. Then I said, I will not make mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. But his word was in my heart like a burning fire. Shut up in my bones, I was weary of holding it back. And I could not, for I heard many mocking, fear on every side. Report, they say, and we will report it. All my acquaintance watch for my stumbling, saying, perhaps he can be induced. Then we will prevail against him, and we will take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me as a mighty awesome one. Therefore, my persecutors will stumble and will not prevail. They will be greatly ashamed, for they will not prosper. Their everlasting confusion will never be forgotten. But, O Lord of hosts, you who test the righteous and see the mind and heart, let me see your vengeance on them, for I have pleaded my cause before you. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has delivered the life of the poor from the hand of evildoers. This is the word of the Lord. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 86. And we say verses 1 to 10 and verses 16 and 17. And it is a prayer of King David for mercy. Bow down your ear, O Lord. Hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am holy. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I cry to you all day long. Rejoice the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. 
For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer and attend to the voice of my supplications. In the day of my trouble, I will call upon you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord, nor are there any works like your works. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Oh, turn to me and have mercy on me. Give your strength to your servants and save the son of your handmaiden. Show me a sign for good that those who hate me may see it and be ashamed because you, Lord, have helped me and confronted me. And, and comforted me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And so now I'll ask our lay reader, Cindy Kingston, to come forward and read from the book of, from uh, St. Paul's letter to the Romans. Uh, Romans 6, 1 through 11, New King James Version, dead to sin, alive to God. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who died to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death. Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been united together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life that he lives, he lives to God. Likewise, you also reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, Glory be to thee, O Lord. <clears throat> a disciple is not above his teacher, nor a servant above his master. It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much more will they call those of his household? Therefore, do not fear them, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, and hidden that will not be known. Whatever I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what you hear in the ear, preach on the housetops. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him 
who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, whoever confesses me before men, him I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, him I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Do not think that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies will be those of his own household. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. Those who go down to the sea in ship who do business on great waters. They see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Today we come together to honor those of our community who have lost their lives in that terrible storm on June 19th and 20th, 1959. Those 35 men and boys who perished in a violent storm have become known as the worst work-related disaster ever to occur in the province of New Brunswick. Friends, we honor them today for their hard work, for their bravery, and for their sacrifice. Good, honest folk, hardworking, just trying to do their best for their families. We've recited their names, not only to remember them, but to thank God for them. We continue to pray for them, and we pray for and support their families some 61 years later. On that fateful day in June 1959, when those dozens of fishermen put out to sea in search of a livelihood, I'm certain that there was no real expectation of the tragedy which was to unfold. I'm certain, however, that those men knew the dangers inherent in doing what they did, even as those evening storms began to roll in and warnings were issued. We have to remember now that, uh, that things were not as they are today. Few boats were equipped with any kind of radio equipment or weather warning after them. The boats were nowhere near as strong or as safe as they are today. Even still, today and every day, we need to remember those who take risks to put food on our tables and roofs over our heads. My friends, those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters. They see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. And we listen to the accounts of those sons and fathers, uncles and neighbors, struggling to bring their nets in as the winds reached force 12 hurricane stage at 75 miles per hour. The 49 foot seas recorded on the Northumberland Strait. We need to remember those words of King David, Psalm 107. My friends, 
Those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders. We get complacent about our own situations and when we think life has dealt us a heavy blow. Let us remember those 22, those 22 boats of 32, which put out to sea that night that did not come back. 22 of 35 of 32 boats did not come back. Let us remember those 51 souls that said goodbye to their families and friends that day. And let us thank God for the 16 who did get to get to hug their loved ones less than 24 hours later. The youngest victim was 13 years of age. My friends, those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. The local communities and families who live in them were forever changed in that fateful night. June 19th and 20th, 1959. Fathers and brothers, uncles and cousins, husbands and lovers were snatched away and futures were cast into chaos for, for practically everyone, practically everyone. And I can tell you as I visit folks and as I get to know the community more and more, I've come to understand the impacts of the Eskumenak disaster, even to this day, 2020, the year 2020. Today, some 61 years later, questions persist about the nature and extent of such a disaster. But one thing is for certain. My friends, those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. brothers and sisters in Christ, I believe that God has set creation on a path that will lead us back to him. There is, however, nothing in the scriptures that tells us that life is going to be simple or easy. The Bible does, however, tell us that a life grounded in the faith, a life grounded in the life, death, resurrection, and example of Jesus Christ will help us to absorb the shocks and crises of our human existence, even in the face of tragedy and disappointment. Because Christ suffered, died, and rose again, we can be assured that, that our Creator knows that what we are going through. Faith in God through our Lord Jesus Christ helps us to know that there is hope beyond our mortal existence. Our faith assures us that Jesus does not ask his followers to endure anything that he himself has not also endured. The psalmist reminds us that there is great risk for those who put food on our tables each and every day. My friends, those who go down to the sea in ships, who do business on great waters, they see the works of the Lord and his wonders. But Psalm 107 is also a song of praise. Not for a tragedy that occurred, but for the unseen work of God in all things, and especially during times of crisis clearly illustrates the dependency of humanity on the greatness of God at all times and in all places, no matter what the circumstance. God has set things in motion and there are things that happen that we cannot predict or control. But our hope is in the name of the Lord who has made heaven and earth. And as people of faith, we can be confident that God's unfolding story will be fulfilled. God will help us to cope now and in the future. 
and to absorb the blows which befall this mortal life. The Gospel of Matthew assures us that God's purposes will eventually be revealed, and even death cannot keep us from being reconciled with him. Our job as people of faith is to believe and to act. Those of us who believe are called to show everyone we meet our relationship with God makes us different, makes us hopeful in this life and hopeful for the greater life to come. Hopeful so that all may believe and have hope in him as well. On this Sunday, when we honor those who lost their lives during the Escriminac disaster on June 19th and 20th, 1959, some of whom, some of whom were fathers I think it's somewhat, somewhat ironic that we also are, we are also called to remember our fathers on this day. So let us remember our Heavenly Father as well. And that our Heavenly Father continues to bless us each and every day, even when we are not listening. Our God calls us through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ out of the emptiness out of the darkness and out of chaos into his marvelous life. my prayer today and every day is that each of us will be like those folks in Psalm 107 those who go down to the sea in ships who do business on great water they see the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Happy Father's Day, everyone. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect for the Third Sunday After Pentecost. Let us pray together. Almighty God, your Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving love. Renew your people with your heavenly grace. And in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A prayer of blessing from Cardinal John Henry Newman. O oh Lord, support us all the day long within of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes, and the busy world is hushed, and the fever of life is over, and our work is done. Then, Lord, in thy mercy, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Now a prayer of encouragement. Almighty God, we pray that, encouraged by the example of your saints, we may run with patience the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, so that at the last we may join those whom we love in your presence, where there is fullness of joy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll ask Deacon Rose to lead us in the prayers for all of conditions of humanity.
Let us pray for Christ's holy Catholic Church. Let us pray for peace on earth and for the unity of all Christian people. Let us pray for our missionaries at home and abroad. Let us remember before God those of our brethren who have departed this life and are at rest. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church, militant here in earth. And as we continue in our prayers, we pray today for our David, our bishop, for Thomas, our priest, and for all clergy and people. We pray for all those that are on our prayer list, that are sick in our church and our community, whether they be in hospital or at home. We pray God's peace and blessing on them. We pray for all those fishermen who have survived this Iskumanak disaster and are still here to remember that, that awful day. We pray your blessing on them today. And we pray for all those who are starting to open up their churches uh, with all the regulations and rules over COVID-19. We just pray that it will continue to get better and better as time goes on. We pray for our families and our friends. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we humbly beseech thee for all sorts and conditions of people, that thou wouldst be pleased to make thy ways known unto them, thy saving health unto all nations. More especially, we pray for the good estate of the Catholic Church, that it may be so guided and governed by thy good spirit, that all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, and hold a faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. Finally, we commend to thy fatherly goodness all those who are any ways afflicted or distressed in mind, body, or state, especially those for whom our prayers are desired, that it may please thee to comfort and relieve them according to their several necessities, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of all their afflictions. And this we beg for Jesus Christ, his sake. Amen. A general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfailingly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and this promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. And now let us say together the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us all evermore. Amen. And so as we bring this video service to a close, I think I'd, I'd like to extend a heartfelt blessing to each and every one of those, uh, those of you around the world, uh, here in Miramichi, across Canada, in Bermuda, and as far away as New Zealand and Australia. We want to extend our blessing to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his everlasting countenance and bring you peace from this day forward and forevermore. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you very much for being with, you, with us, and thank you very much for honoring those who died during the Eskumenak disaster, June 19th and 20th, 1959. May the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Amen. <laughs>